Hello and welcome back to the Practice Odyssey. Uh, this is a podcast where myself, Jen, and Alex, that's me, where we basically, we inflict a practice method um, for two weeks and we practice it and try it out and use it hopefully to enhance our plane and then we report back to you guys. Um, so welcome to episode four. All right. Hi, Alex. Hey, Jen. Also, I like, did you say implement or inflict the practice method upon ourselves? <laughs> or is I said, I might have said inflict, but of course, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Always enjoyable. (laughs) Yeah, so this week we are diving into Susan Milan's Flute Technique Book 2. We should probably go into why we haven't picked Book 1. Because there is a Book (laughs) 1. There is a Book 1. We should make that really clear. Uh, Why did we not choose Book 1? Well, uh, you see, uh, listeners, Jen and I, we've we've had the pleasure of actually meeting Susan Milan. And um, when we met her, we were able to um, purchase the flute technique books from her, or she gave them to us. We, yeah, we did buy them. So we bought the flute technique book two from Susan Milan. And when we asked her if she had book one at the time, she unfortunately did not. So we have a yeah. special affinity for these books because they are signed by Susan herself. They are. So our book ones are not signed and therefore we wanted to start with book two. And mm-hmm. uh, the main difference between this flute technique book and uh, her first book is that the this one focuses on scales and triplets and sextuplets. Also has pre-scale warm-up scales and is broken up into intermediate and advanced levels, which is pretty cool. Susan Milan, she is an English professor of flute at the Royal College of Music. And for those who don't know, that is a college of music located in London. Also where the Royal It's the are. shiz. Yep, it's <laughs> yes. pretty good. <laughs> uh, she is not only a recording artiste, but also a classical performer, composer, author, and entrepreneur. There's nothing that Susan Milan cannot do. Besides being a fantastic flautist, and she does like to be called flautist instead of flutist. Figured this does out. Does she really? Cause yes, because when you go to her website, it says Susan Milan flautist. Um, and for Ooh. our listeners who maybe aren't so familiar with um, flute drama or you know, flute tea. So much flute drama. Oh, this is, con- <laughs> yes, this is controversial, Alex, when now... Yes. Um, Moving so, into controversial territory. We are. And I'm not even done with the bio yet. <laughs> this is great. Uh, yes. So uh, it's a big debate whether flute players should be called flutists. F-L-U-T-I-S-T-S. Flutists. Or if we should be called flautists. F-L-A-U-T-I-S-T-S. I really or if hope you come I... from Australia, flautists. That's oh my lord. Uh, just to Ooh. add in an extra level of and how do you spell that? Which which spelling do they it's, go I with? I think it's the spelt the same as a flautist, a uh, flat flautist F L A U T I S T, but okay. we pronounce it flautist. Or maybe I've just been mispronouncing it my whole life. That's also <laughs> quite possible. If you say it kind of fast, everyone thinks you say that you're a flirtist. Um, which I guess could have professional flutist. <laughs> we which play is a our whole different and meaning better eyelashes. And profession, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> however, yep. Susan Milan on her website, big letters, it says flautist or flautist. Okay. Um, however, or flirtist. Maybe Jen will just be flirtists. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could catch on. Maybe we should start it. <laughs> okay, sorry. So we're getting a little off track here in today's bio. Really, really, sorry, we, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Oh, no. All for good fun. No. <laughs> oh, no. Excellent. Um, anyways, uh, so there's a huge thing. So besides being a fantastic flautist with many albums under her belt, Susan is also world renowned for her fantastic teaching. Uh, she's taught all over the world. I mean, she also hosts a fabulous summer music festival where young musicians around the world come together to play chamber music. We've we've uh, we we had the privilege of um, having a master class with Susan Milan. Um, at her house, actually, and it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, so yes. beautiful. Go to. But do you know Milan's what house. the thing which really left a lasting impression on me of the whole experience there Ooh, was how organized her music library was. <gasps> Holy cow! That's right. Holy cow! You could Pinterest that thing. It was yes. insane. 
It, it was, was so amazing. Beautiful. And her memory Ugh. as well. She would say, oh, I think this note in your edition of the Poulonk is incorrect. Let me find this one yeah. edition <laughs> from like 30 <laughs> years ago, which I know is like Urtex Poulonk. And I she know. found it within like a oh, minute. She was like, I oh, know. here it is. Let's cross reference. And it, it was, was amazing. Oh, it was so good. Summary of the week's book. So maybe we could yeah. talk. So Jen, what did we do with this book? This was, I have to say, one of the more straightforward instructions which we've been given for practicing so far. Mm, I'd agree. She too has a kind of a six day week practice regime with maybe an optional kind of revision day on day seven but you don't necessarily have to play so it's interesting that she's also kind of built in a rest day into this program anyway so you start off with a warm-up key of the day then once you finish your warm-up key of the day then you progress to the um, exercises in the same key exercises one to eight which consist of your major minor both minors and then your uh, arpeggios and then the dominant sevens, diminished sevens. So exercises one to eight, and then you practice them with articulations one and two. Mm -hmm. um, so that's day one. And then you progress to your current study and then you progress to your current repertoire. Then day two, you will warm up in the same key of the day, sticking to the same key that you did before. Then you do your exercises one to eight in articulations, except you would practice articulations three and four. Now, depending on how advanced you are with your technique and how comfortable you're feeling with them, you can practice as many or as little articulations as you want. What she emphasizes is that she just really wants you to have the scales really fluent, practice them first in legato, then move to the articulations, try to memorize each system and practice with your eyes closed. And in big capital letters, she's like, do not practice one scale or chord at a time in all the articulations. You have to go through the whole exercise one to eight in one articulation, then go back to a number one in the next articulation. And uh, that is the summary of the week's book, week one. All right. So my week one. Your uh, week one. Let's see. So I think maybe I will just start off by playing my voice memo. <laughs> okay. After I finished my first day of practicing by Susan's method. Because I think that says a lot of what I'm about to explain as well. Okay. So it's day one with Susan Milan's exercises. And I have to say, I, I mean, we had C major for the first one. And it's all supposed to be with articulations number one and two. It took me, even with repeats, about 10 minutes to go through all of it. I think I'm going to go back and do some more. But time-wise, it's really nice and succinct, like a good way to go through everything and kind of get a good sense of tonality for the key that you're working on for the day. So yeah. All right, Susan. No three hours of scales today. <laughs> so yeah. So my initial thing was we are so burned from the other one. <laughs> We're so burned from <laughs> Daphne <Daffinelco> Gobert. <laughs> I mean, from now We're on, still just recovering. <laughs> And it was probably maybe upon reflection, maybe not the best one to start with. But I mean, <laughs> but also, you know, it gave us like this, 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 um, like you know, level that now we're just like, well, it's no TG. So yeah, no, I mean, yeah, like is is the plus side. The perspective is now everything is easy. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, in no way am I saying that what we did here was easy like it is pretty straightforward scales but it's from what she recommends for practice guides and tips it is quite easy like it's a great way to just be like room okay and I'm in the key I'm all set you know like I, I could see it being also really good for auditions like whenever you have to mm. when you're in the warm-up room and you don't have that much time and they've posted the excerpts and it's like okay I'm doing Firebird okay let me just mm. run through quickly a warm-up in B major this in B major or trying to get like you know the right tonality for it so mm. that would be like something really good. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of my initial thoughts on uh, the first week of, um, during the first week of practice, is that it was um, not taking too long, which was great. 
Although I did find one thing, um, like she says in her book, like practice one articulation until you are satisfied. And that, that, that could be yeah. very, very tedious. So, I mean, after I kind of ran through it initially just to get an idea of how long this would, like the duration of my practicing would be so I could plan out, like, you know, my week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, okay, I could spend more time. And it is, I mean, we, we know it's really hard to do it. Uh, so, like, be very consistent and accurate with, like, your articulation and everything. Yeah. However, just... It, it was a lot harder than I anticipated for them just being scales and arpeggios. I think the fact that Susan takes them all up to the higher registers too, so you go up to high yeah. Ds for some of them as well, yeah. was really good. I was so happy because I yeah. think this was also our first method where we really got to um, press in, or like play in the higher tessitura, like the C, yep. like the high C three, C four, like real, like yeah. and higher, which was mm. so refreshing because I had we hadn't done that in a few of our practice um. Like the, well, obviously no, in Taffin and Gobert's yeah. time, they didn't have that. They didn't play very often up there, and same for Moyes. Um, he only goes up to B three. Uh, so it looks like Susan wrote this in two thousand six, or that's when it was published. And so you know mm. that's definitely twenty first century. And mm. we definitely had pieces like you know Prokofiev's classical symphony, oh, which yeah. makes you very comfortable with. Them nice high D runs and everything <laughs> and um yes. M- Mahler symphonies so yeah. <laughs> yeah where you play up in nice and up in the high register so yeah, yeah so I really enjoyed working on that this week but uh, for me it was really hard as well starting everything in legato <laughs> because she says it's important to begin with an even legato before launching into other articulations and mm. For me, at least, that was that was quite difficult because, like, for me, it's it's easier to articulate when learning, um, like, to play quicker, especially in the upper register. So yeah. uh, that was a little frustrating for me at first. Um, at least that's how I interpreted how we were supposed to practice it. So I would, like, try and get this down perfectly in, like, articulations one and two. And, like, starting at a sl- I would start at a slower tempo and then try to get it faster. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, a little frustrating. And uh, But good. Now, <laughs> then it was really easy. And I, I see why, I think... I mean, my I think why Susan would want us wanted us to do that, at least how I interpreted it, was um that like when you slur, you you have no wiggle room for the fingers, like to mm, yeah. do something silly. Like you hear every little mistake. Yeah. So your fingers can't be doing some random thing. It can't accidentally not be timed correctly. So, anyways, so it's really good. It was really hard though. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I think my last observation for week one was that this was the first book with some cover art. And yeah. it was actually kind of nice. Like, I hadn't seen a book with cover art on my music stand in a while, and it was just really nice to close it and see this beautiful artwork of flutes and a ruler. I wasn't certain why the ruler was there, um, but it is. Yeah. I don't know. There. And there's like some graph paper too in the treble clef. But um but no. Um it was really interesting. There's like a lot of geometric shapes and everything. So hmm. uh, along with the flutes. So maybe it's like technique and mathematical technique. But anyways, it was really interesting. And it was it was very nice to see on my stand all week. I was very happy. So, yeah. So Jen, how was your week one? My week one. Look, I seem to have a I think I had a very similar week to you. Like it was I liked the full range. That was really cool. Um, although I, what I really liked about a, this this book was that she had accommodated for people who were maybe like more intermediate, who right, like, you know, yeah, who don't fly through the too. C's and D's just yet. Because I mean, like they can be pretty crazy. And like the speed of dotted crotchet equals seventy two. I mean, that's a that's like a pretty. That's a respectable That's a speed. speed. It's a respectable mm-hmm. speed for scales, especially like getting up into the high C's and D's. Like you have to be pretty comfortable around them. So I like it. She's got two sections, like two options for doing the scales if you don't have the book. The first one is for like uh, the first kind of level and she goes up to maybe the G's. So it's good. Like you can um, you can work your way up and get a really solid foundation with like say 90 
90% of the scale and then when you're feeling really confident with the intermediate, then you can push on to mm-hmm. the, the advanced, which I thought was really cool. I liked that because, you know, sometimes you can get a new book of tech technique and it's just overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, and, and like, I also like, you know, she's got like lots of, like clearly she's, the, her, her background is like her experience with teaching is really coming through in this book as well because she's she's um, broken down like how to get the scales faster and more even like with all her little practice tips with the rhythm. So mm-hmm. you've got your dotted rhythm, then you reverse the dotted rhythm, then you've got two demi semi quavers and, and then she, yeah, so she's got like five different rhythms which you can practice these scales on to help the, the fingers get even and the legato become more even. Which I really, mm-hmm. really liked, and also I thought a little, a li- I love this little um, reminder which she has down the bottom of her first intro page. Oh, yes. <laughs> Apart from when playing D natural, keep your little finger in contact with the foot joint keys at all times. No. No hopping. hopping. You can tell <laughs> that she has said this probably to ninety five percent of her students. It's so great mm-hmm. because uh, the little finger, like if to those who are not flute players. Um, the little finger on your right hand um, normally sits um, on these three bottom foot joint keys um, and you can get away with not always pressing it down. This um, is true. Because it doesn't, it changes the note but only slightly and yes. you can, so you know, you can get away with it. Uh, yes, it's usually the first thing that goes in faster technique. <laughs> yes. <laughs> however, it's the first thing you check over. However, if you are striving for perfect technique, you should keep yes. your exactly. uh, bottom finger down, sliding around. Yep, yep, touching those keys at all times. But yes, it is. Yes, as you say, Alex, it's the first thing to go in fast passages. Um, so mm-hmm. I liked that. I thought that was like, oh yeah, there we go. She she knows where she knows all the tricks. She knows all she the tricks. She has been there. She, she has, has seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, and another thing I really, really liked about this, this, uh, how she did the warm ups in the key um, before you started the, um, the scales like fast. So you did your slow mm-hmm. um, variations in the key, which I think just actually they seem to have a lot of similarities with Moise de la Sonorite, like where you pra- were practicing the dynamics and the intonation. She's kind of included a lot of this in the warm-ups yeah Um, which i really liked because it really kind of helps get your ears stuck into the intonation of the day it was slow enough that you could be sitting there with your metronome with your metronome i have a tuner (laughs) metronome so i just call it my metronome Mm -hmm. my tuner you could i could sit there with my tuner on my music stand and i could really just you know double check all of my tuning and then when the scales came it was like yeah like I, I knew that the, the most of the corners were ironed out. But, yeah, so I really, I really, that was a big plus for me. I really liked the warm-up part. I did, too. It was, yeah. and it was so nice just doing these, um like, starting from such, like, the, the third register on the flute as well, going down. Mm. Because I don't think we did too much of that with Marcel Moise. Like, no, we it was did a lot of low things. register, wasn't it? Yeah, and when we yeah. did the higher register, it was always starting from the mid register, going yep. up. I yep. believe. And so mm-hmm. it was just really nice to, I mean, obviously sometimes it's kind of annoying, but to, to start <laughs> like in the high register. Occasionally, but, sometimes I'd be like, this is really high for first thing in the morning. Yeah. So I'd do some harmonics first and then I would kind of, yeah. like, all right, and then, I'm ready. <laughs> I know. We still haven't seen any harmonics in any of these books too. I'm interested no. to see which And they're which like my will... fave. Yeah. I anyway. know. They're great. Uh, so anyways. Cool. Mm. <laughs> Spoiler alert, guys. Eventually Spoiler we're going to get the harmonics guys, yeah. and we're going <laughs> to talk about them for a while. But yeah, no, I really like the warm ups too. They're just nice and I really enjoyed all the variations that she added as too. Um, I'm trying yeah. to think about my the rest of my week one. I think I think that's that was about Oh yeah, uh yeah, the articulation's like crazy short. Um yeah. so if I just did the one, two articulations, like even if Sometimes, like, when my C's and D's weren't as nice as I liked them to be and I slowed it down and practiced with the rhythms and everything. Even then, like, um, it was kind of pretty it, – it wasn't very long. But, I mean, I do like how she gives, like, options for 
levels again in that she's like if you're finding mm-hmm. this really fast going through if, if you're finding this like you're cruising through it then you can actually do all of the articulations you can just do <laughs> one entire key in one day and that'll be a really good kind of aerobic warm-up week two alex how did that go yeah so uh <laughs> week two for me um was was a little tricky this week. Uh, okay. In my personal life, I've got a lot going on currently. Like I do live in Germany, mm. but I'm also learning German. So I, I so I'm in German classes. I'm up to like C1, which is quite difficult. And we had a lot of homework this week. And um, I'm That's also like looking... getting to university level, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So when I pass this, technically I can speak German at a university standard. So and then. Holy moly. I know. Um, just bring me all Holy your moly. hard German sentences. As long as they're not oh in Swabish, gosh. which is the local dialect, I'll be fine. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. So, yeah, this week was a little tricky for me. Um, and anyways, I have a, another nice little um, sound clip we can listen to from the beginning of this week. All right, Susan Milan. Um, day... I lost track. Um, I have to say that practicing this week has been so hard to schedule. I've, I've put it in my calendar and just between teaching lessons during the week and organizing future commitments and everything, it's just been really hard to find time to practice. And it stinks because I think this week has been one of the easiest weeks to, to, you know, to schedule what Susan set up here is so nicely organized and I just can't find time to make it in my schedule. I mean, it would help if a few of the places that I work, I could practice after hours, but it's not. And then I get home and I can't practice then either. And then I'm also exhausted. And it's just been one of those weeks where it's just really hard I feel bad because I love Susan and her method and it's so great and I've used it so much in the past with my students but this week this is the reality es ist die Realität so like they say in German it's just it's just been a lot this week it's only Tuesday so oh sorry Man. Right into CPE buck. Sorry. <laughs> Man, I feel you. I get those, yeah. Yeah. I get those weeks. I get those weeks so much. Yeah, I think for like a lot of musicians do. It's just, it's just, it was really hard because, you know, like Susan, she, she does do it very, like she explains like, okay, like two thirds of your practice should be on tone, scales, blah, 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 and study work. And then, you know, like one third, I guess, on the other stuff. Um, so, but then like I, I, like I had so many like small appointments where it was like, okay, I'm teaching here and then I have like an hour. Mm. And then over here I'm teaching over mm. here and then I have to meet this person to organize this event or this and this, you know, like. Mm-hmm. So all mm-hmm. like very, it was a very big, heavy administrative week for myself. Um, which yeah. just made it hard to practice. So when I finally got to practicing, I was like, oh, let's record a voice memo. I was like, Mah! I don't know. And then it was only Tuesday and I was exhausted. So <laughs> It was only Tuesday. <laughs> I did not realize that until I like looked at the date. Uh, for week two, I really leaned into the whole bit where Susan says, concentrate on one key for a period of time. And... Like I said, I was doing mostly administrative stuff this week. I didn't have any concerts or anything. I did have the one audition that we were both recording for. Um, Mm. That was it. So I decided to really lead into Firebird this week. And so I made my key that I practiced the whole week just B. So I did B major. That was it this week. Didn't do any other keys, which felt weird. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. then I did I also chose an etude that was also in B major so because the one thing I kind of missed I have to say from this book it's like really great for major minor like all the scales are like scales mm. arpeggios diminished mm. sevenths dominant sevenths mm. chromatics mm. Um, but there aren't no thirds in there 
and there's not really any yeah. like patterns where like you can make patterns on it and I'm in here it does say that you know at the very bottom she's like you know you should spend to- time on tone scales arpeggios and study work and there's no tone in here so I'm thinking that she wants you to also resource like um like find other resources to throw in yeah. with your practicing yeah so I tried to find an yeah. etude that kind of had this like idea of broken chords and thirds built in. So yeah, so my um, my week two was spent a lot with B major and then, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel very comfortable with it now. Uh, and I did, great. I did try doing the, the thing as well, practicing with our eyes closed, which was... Fun. It was definitely interesting. Uh, you, I, I felt like as though I was able to listen better to what I was playing. I mean, it yeah. probably goes without saying. I thought I was inter- interested to see how that would like help my practicing the B major, just doing that. But I felt as though it didn't really actually help just playing one key the whole week. Although to be fair, mm. I also managed to like in one day my best recording for the fiber like the one I did in like 10 minutes prep <laughs> so I mean it probably <laughs> did have a bit of an effect but over the week it did not feel like that I felt like it was like my playing was okay but it wasn't getting much better and I don't know so but that could also just be a sign of where I was mentally this week yeah. but, but um but yeah so that's was um kind of like my week so it mm. was um I don't know. It was it was good. I'm glad I had Susan to practice this week and not Tafanil Gobert yeah. because I think that may have killed that would have killed me. <laughs> but yeah, it was just it was a tough week. Lots going on. Aww. So meh. So but how was your week Aww. two, Jen? Was it any better or <laughs> Well uh, my week two. Again, yeah, I think maybe it was cause um yeah, I kind of had one of those again weeks. Got a new job. It's good, um, but you know, the, as with every new job, like you got to do this. Like it's just like yeah, it's gonna be from this time to this time. You're like okay, that sounds great, but you know, like little things just keep adding up. Like you know, it's it's hard to just jump straight into practice. I find it's like it takes me like minimum like an hour to s- almost switch brain. Oh yeah, that's brain gears so true. like. Actually, I remember going to like at uni, like I was struggling with the whole juggling too many, too many things. And so I went to the time management guy at uni. They are, they are very good at talking about time management. Clearly it's like the number one issue of university <laughs> students. This is a job. They're very, <laughs> their whole job seems to be explaining time management to university students. Oh, no. anyway, and he, his, his theory was it took your brain hours to switch gears. What? From one thing to another, like properly, so that you could really focus on something. All those things, like, yeah, three, like, you got to give yourself a buffer of like two to three hours for your brain to actually really be able to switch gears and get into kind wow. of the zone. Yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow, I'm not factoring that. I'm like giving myself travel time to get from one place. Actually, sometimes I didn't even factor in travel time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very optimistic. Clearly, I think everyone's invented teleportation. I think I'm better at it now, but still, I'm very optimistic with how many things I can put in my day. It's just, it's a, it's tricky. It's tricky, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, finding so a balance. So that's why, I, finding like, the balance. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So that was what I liked about Susan Milan's it's ratio. The ratio of like, okay, if you spend, you have yay amount of minutes, hours, whatever, Mm-hmm. You spend two thirds of that on technique, then it will improve. Susan Milan's method is definitely one of the ones that recognizes, kind of like more moist did, um, you mm. know, where it's like, you are humans, you have things, life has issues. This is what I recommend. Like I felt as though Susan's method was a little bit, yeah, it was more realistic and mm. yeah, it was definitely and it like made it you easier. could adjust it expanded it out and you wanted to get like one set of scales like to top notch yeah. like 92 speed like you could practice all of them in like those rhythms get it yeah. really really smooth you can practice as many articulations as you want I mean like you could probably if you wanted spend a good hour on it if you wanted um, and also you can 
contract it down to what you need it to be. So I kind of really like that flexibility. Like I think that is one of the big, the big things I've really liked about this system mm-hmm. is the flexibility. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have great practice weeks and then sometimes it's like that week. So It's oh just gosh. like it finishes and you sit back and reflect and you're like, hmm, what did happen? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, your verdict for Susan Milan's Triplets and t- Sex Tuplets, Flute Technique Book 2. Yeah. <laughs> okay, two thumbs up. Yay! I really liked, yes, I really liked the flexibility um, of the time. I liked the full range. I mm-hmm. liked that she had it broken down into ways you could practice it, things to focus on. I liked the warm up that was in the same key that you would be practicing in, like to help yes. to kind of lock in the intonation mm-hmm. and the warm up um, all together. I thought it was really nicely cohesive. Yes. Um, so I really liked it. The effect on my plane, I think, as you said, we haven't been doing the high register full scales. Mm-hmm. So again, particularly with the arpeggios going up to the D's and the C's, um, yeah. I found because I was practicing those again consistently every day, um, some of the pieces which I was playing, which did go up into the high where I had to kind of like, you know, you have to like whip off a couple of high C's and D's, like they, they <laughs> popped out way easier. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah, they felt they felt a lot more calm and controlled than perhaps they had previously. So yeah. I saw that was that was really encouraging to see. And yeah. um and also yeah, the legato and having to practice it all beautifully and the chromatics as well, like I was playing a bit of volier. Mm. This week, and that's got some that's got some pretty beautiful chromatics in there. Anyway, so my chromatics were were going well. So that oh, was yeah. that was nice. Yeah. So yes, yes, I think I think I will be keeping this in my weekly <laughs> my stays weekly on the schedule. Stand. <laughs> yeah, stays on the stays on the stand. Yes, <laughs> that's what we should call it. Stays Not on just the stand. for this nice cover art, oh, for the material. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's your verdict, Alex? First off, well, my hums are not at Susan Milan or this method at all. The method is, I, I really like her collection. It's really good, mm. especially knowing that it's like, you know, 6 8 and sex tuplet, triplet um, orientated. I, mm. I like, and everything in here is really good. I think, just like we said before, I would have liked having maybe some thirds in here as well just mm-hmm. to kind of help beef out the practice session a little bit. However, she also says in the beginning, you know, like supplement this with other like tone things and, you know, at other things. So it would be really easy to do that. So I think I'm going to give it a thumb and three quarters up just because I would have cool. really loved that. So then I don't have to like, I mean, it's easy enough like to do thirds without music, but I would have loved to see them written <laughs> out to that higher register as well. And so, cause I'm, yeah, a, it's good for your sight reading, isn't it? Yeah. For my sight reading. I like it. And then yeah. also for like, I don't know, maybe I'm just a really lazy player, but I, I know I can like figure these things out by ear, but sometimes it's just really easy to open up a book, have it written there and you just have to like, it's just like reading a book. It's not too much like mental yeah. capacity. I can spend my, my mental thoughts on squirrels. And but, it's, also, but it's also like, nice because brains. like it's mm-hmm. super nerdy, but there are a few different ways you can handle the turn up the top with yeah, scales exactly. and thirds. So it'd be interesting mm-hmm. to see how she handled that. Yeah, yeah I, I exactly. see what you mean. Yeah. So yeah. that would have been really nice. I'm getting really nitpicky though. And I I, I love this. Like, I think this will also, this has been on, on stand, stand. stand. Yeah, it's going to stay on the stand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's much lighter than TG2. And it's, it's so like the way she's laid it out too, it's just so easy to read as well. Mm-hmm, like the, mm-hmm. she did a great job Very with accessible. that. It's just, yeah. and she has it not only organized by key, but then she also does it where it's just the, the, um like made like she also chunks it out by like so you could just like even though she tells you not to you can just like turn a page and find all the diminished chords or you can find all of the minor <laughs> chords or minor scales sorry so I yes. mean it's great so I highly recommend this book I'm just mm. gonna give it the one and three quarters thumb because Susan Milan all come out with an, a, uh what do they call it an addenda uh, something like a, an addendum a- amendment 
Um, I, yes. I do just want to add in, sorry, this is not verdict territory, but one little thing I did uh-huh. like was at the end yeah. of the intermediate and advanced section, she had a list of recommended studies mm-hmm. you could do, which yeah, was really cool. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's <sighs> the end of our 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 final final practice method for this season is that right? whoa oh yes because next week is revision well yeah revision reflection, reflection, I guess. reflection. all of our Just, different r words yeah what are we still what have we kept what have we got rid of yeah, yeah. so we will yeah, reflect stuff. on what like you know what we've done <laughs> for the last few weeks the last few methods talk to y'all about what stayed what didn't and also, like, we'd love to maybe include some things if any of our listeners are out there and would like to write in about some of your experiences with these methods. Maybe we could include mm. that as well. So, yeah. yeah. So check in, send us some stuff. Um, well, we'll say it in the closing credits, but our email address is thepracticeodyssey at gmail.com. And you can also find that in our show notes. But yeah. And then, yes. then after that, we will, uh, yeah, so next week we'll talk about reflection revision and also announce uh, the theme or what we might be doing for season two, maybe. Know, maybe give you a little. Two. Yeah, season two, it'll be interesting. I'm pretty excited about it. It will be. Two. Yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. It's going to be so... meaty tea. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to it and also am, am slightly <laughs> scared. But I'm a little cool. bit terrified from what you told me. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so that's it for today. Uh, thanks to Ivan Potter, the awesome, for our show art, mm. our, our mm. podcast art. Check so it out. Beautiful. It is so nice. Um, so cool. Today's episode was edited by the lovely Jen Bird. Whoop. And her awesome, uh, out that she's technology. editing this on an iPod, iPod, <laughs> I- iPad. Hi. She's editing this on an iPad. <laughs> Gosh. Our theme music was arranged by Alex Woods. That's me. Awesome. Um, and our edit, our episode is um, produced with Buzzsprout, which is an awesome yeah, yeah. Uh, podcasting platform. Check it out. Um, like we said earlier, tell us where you're listening from. Do you have any ideas for our next podcast? And what are your favorite practicing tips? Let us know. And your mm-hmm. thoughts and questions, send them to our email address at thepracticeodyssey at gmail.com. And if you like this episode, uh, you can subscribe to us to hear our bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, our TuneIn and Alexa, and iHeartRadio. And if you're feeling extra lovely, feel free to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Let us know what you think. <laughs> and that's it for today. We'll see you all again in two weeks. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.